Sometimes to get a quick stepper motor project up and running, I need a motor driver available, and these A4988 style modules are very easy to use, but you still might need a breadboard and some kind of controller, Arduino, and software development. So it would be good to just have a quick PCB that can take this module and it just has a button to go one direction and the other direction, and maybe some speed control with a potentiometer, and then just plug the motor's cable into the board, and it's ready to go just for simple things where the motor needs to turn one way or the other at varying speeds. Well, that can be done with a small Arduino, like a Nano, or even an ATtiny85 based little chip. So this module would go here, but I decided to use discrete logic. So I have a 555 as a step pulse generator, and to control all the signals on here to make the motor run and in different directions, I'm using one quad 4011 NAND gate chip. So I designed it with NEMA 17 steppers in mind, because that's what I'm going to be using near term. I made it so that it can slide on top of here, and then four holes here so I can mount the board to the motor. Once I came up with the design, PCB Way sponsored the project by providing these PCBs to test out the concept. Let's start assembling one of these and take a look at the schematic. So first let's look at this 4988 motor driver module. This driver can do full stepping down to 1 16th micro stepping, and the motor power supply can be between 8 and 35 volts. Here's the actual schematic of the module with that chip on it. We provide motor power and logic power, 5 volts, and then all the control signals so we can set the micro-stepping resolution and control whether it's enabled and stepping and in what direction. One thing to note, we're tying reset to sleep so that it basically always has a pull-up and we're not in reset, and likewise enable has a 100k pull down. I put a 100 nano to ground on that reset pin, so with 100 nano to ground and a 100k pull up, when we power on, it will be in reset until gradually the reset goes high enough to enable the driver. And I don't want this to be enabled by default because when we're not stepping, if we have this enabled, it's going to be consuming power and holding the motor in a locked position. But when it's idle, I just want to wait, not locking it and not consuming power, just waiting for a direction switch to be pressed to go one way or the other. So I'm controlling the enable through these gates so that when we power on, I have a pull-up resistor here, and that goes through an inverter giving a logic low, goes through another inverter giving a logic high on this enable. So with a 10k here and an internal 100k pull down, we end up, as soon as we can after power on, bringing this enable close to 5 volts and disabling the driver until we're ready. I have these optional capacitor footprints here. They're marked do not install, but it's just in case I wanted to experiment, like maybe if there's too much noise on here and I wanted to filter it, or if I wanted to maybe debounce these switch inputs. And there's this extra resistor here. It was just for any experimenting I wanted to do and not get committed if I wanted to isolate the enable and try to control things a little differently here. So it's just 10k and 100k pull down. I decided to allow the motor to take between 9 and 24 volts of a main power supply in on screw terminals, and the motor driver is recommended to have a big electrolytic capacitor on the motor power supply, so I have that here. And then, with this broad range of input voltages, I'm using a 7805 old school regulator to give me a 5 volt supply for the logic on here. I just happen to have a bunch of these sitting around, and they can take a wide input up to maybe an absolute max of 35 volts. Even if we use the max 24 volts in, and we have to drop it down to 5, that could lead to a lot of wasted power here. But since we're only drawing minimal current to control this logic, we're not really dissipating anything or generating much heat. So for the workbench, it's okay. I have a power LED, and I also have this other LED. It's marked Do Not Install. So this is to tell me when I'm running the motor, when a button is pressed. 
and I connected it directly to the enable net right here. But the problem is, if we want to do that, it will load down this net. So instead of getting close to a clean logic high 5 volts, the LED is drawing a little current, and the output of a 4000 series CMOS NAND gate, if we are either syncing or sourcing current, and we are powering it at 5 volts, we can do maybe half of a milliamp reliably. And that's not much to drive an LED and maintain a proper level here. So the LED actually makes this drop down to a high of about 3.5 volts, which is still enough, so I'm doing it on the workbench, but normally I wouldn't want this here or else I would put a different thing like a transistor to drive it. We can set the micro-stepping resolution we want with these three jumpers, and to control the motor, we bring one or the other direction switch to ground. I didn't label these as up or down or forward or reverse because it's completely arbitrary. So normally if this were an Arduino where we can properly sequence and put delays on these signals, we would control all of this in a certain method. But here with this asynchronous network, anything can happen in a race condition where we're trying to enable this, and at the same time we might be trying to clock it and change its direction, so the motor might be trying to go a little bit forward, a little bit backwards, and all of that. And again, that's fine for the workbench. If we miss a step while we're turning this thing on, or if we go one step the wrong way and then we go the way we want, that's perfectly fine just to get the motor turning. So if we look at this without pressing buttons and look at it from a power on state, all of these gates with nothing being pressed on the switch, they're really all being controlled by this one gate down here, which has a pull up resistor. So we power on and this is high. It's configured as an inverter so it goes low and it sets this direction pin low. So that by default the motor is going to want to go in a certain direction. Then that low is inverted as a high again. And this high on a 10k resistor going to this enable, with this driver having an internal pull down of 100k on the enable, we set this high and we're getting close enough to 5 volts here as soon as we can when we power on, so that we're not locking the motor and consuming power. So also with this being a high on power on, that brings this gate output to a low because it inverts again, and what that's doing is disabling my step pulse generator from changing the output here and generating steps. Looking at the truth table for the NAND gate with that one input powering on as a low and the other being driven high and low by the free running 555 oscillator, the output is locked at a high so there's no clock step pulse. When we bring that other control input high, which happens when we press one of the buttons, now the 555 changes high and low, and the output changes as well in the opposite polarity. So we get step pulses. So the 555 here is just being controlled by a 100k resistor for the rate of the pulses, and if I wanted to be able to change this range, I'm using a through-hole capacitor footprint so I have a machine pin socket to allow me to swap out a different capacitor and get a whole new adjustment on my speed range. So let's say we want to run in a certain direction and we bring this pin 1 to ground with a switch. With this output here still being a logic high, and this input now is a logic low, that's why there's a 10k resistor here so I don't short the output of this gate straight to ground. Now with this gate low, the output is high, and we're in now enabling the 555 pulses to make it to the step input. This direction input hasn't changed. We bring the enable low to enable the driver, and the motor runs. If we press the other switch, this gate input is low, the output is high, so now the direction has changed, and this output goes low. So through a 10k, we're bringing the enable low, 10k in parallel with 100k to ground, and again, with this being low, we're now enabling step pulses to go through, and the motor can run in the opposite direction. So if we look at scope traces, here's one for the power on where 5 volts is getting applied, and the enable gets pulled high. We can see the step signal gets a temporary blip high while everything is getting stabilized. Then when we look at the reset pin gradually going high, and this being a different time scale, with all of that power on step pulse glitching, 
The module is still in reset anyway at that point, so the motor is not going to be trying to run. Then if we look at what happens when we press one of the direction run mode buttons, the enable goes low to enable the driver, step pulses then are allowed to come through, and the direction pin is going to be set either high or low depending which direction to run. If we zoom in on those edges, it looks like the enable pin has a bit of a slope on it. It's not a fast transition. I'm not sure the exact reason on that. It may just be the inherent capacitance on the pin considering I'm driving it through a 10k and there's a 100k pull down. This might just be the inherent behavior. So again, even if these signals are still switching after we've enabled, worst case we get one step pulse in the wrong direction or something, it's okay for what we're doing. We wouldn't design anything asynchronous like this for any serious or production intended design. Really, we would throw an Arduino or something here and control these signals in the timing and sequence that we want. So let's see it actually running. With the driver now attached to this NEMA 17 stepper and it's plugged into the output of the driver here, I'm giving 12 volts and the jumpers are set for 16th microstep mode. Potentiometer here to control the speed and I've got two direction push buttons plugged into the switches right there. I'm currently using a 6.8 nano timing capacitor on the 555 circuit, which I can switch out later for this 150 pico to go even faster. I've put a freewheeling diode on the stepper to make it easier to see. So if I start rotating, I can go in either direction and adjust the speed. And if I try to go too far with the potentiometer, I don't have another onboard resistor in series to make sure there's always something. So it will get to a point where it will just stop if I try to go when there's no actual clock. That's convenient because if I don't try to run, I can turn the motor. But if I try to run, I'm enabling it and there's no clock step pulses. So it's actually a locked rotor that I can test out like that. So I like that feature. If I swap out the capacitor, I'll need to turn the speed back down so it can ramp up. So now the minimum speed is a lot faster than it used to be. I can only go so fast, so yeah. With the stepper set with no jumpers for full step mode, we can see how noisy it is and compare it as we start adding jumpers. Now let's go to half step mode. Quarter step mode. Eighth step mode. And 16th step mode with all jumpers. Now it's really quiet. Going back directly to full step mode. Way louder. This allows me to test the motor and I can just unhook this and put it on a different motor or just keep it physically detached if I want to put the motor somewhere else out of the way. That makes it easy and flexible to start prototyping with steppers on the workbench. Now I can easily get a motor project up and running without having to get stuck searching for parts or writing and debugging code just to make the motor turn for a straightforward test. Thanks to PCBWay for providing the PCBs for this project. Thanks for watching and come back soon to see this PCB being put to practical use.